roast battle for the ages. The Bulletin Debate, a 19th century poetry slam between Henry Lawson and Banjo Patterson about the virtues and vices of bush life in Australia in the year 1892. Originally published in the Bulletin on the 23rd of July 1892, Banjo's response was swift, directly addressing Mr Lawson in the opening line later changed to Mr Townsman when published in The Man from Snowy River and other verses in 1895. Playfully scornful and cheekily referencing Lawson's works Faces in the Street and The Bastards from the Bush, in In Defence of the Bush, Patterson outright calls Lawson nothing more than a whinger, coming off more of a, as more of a personal attack on Lawson, calling him a swell and insinuating that it was actually Lawson's character that had made the bullock loony, rather than addressing the elements of bush life that Lawson illustrates in Borderland. Now a little context for you. The Sydney Push were a Sydney larrikin gang in the 1870s. Rise Up William Riley is a reference to the opening lines of a ballad from 1817 called Riley and Colin Band. And Adonna is a woman, particularly a man's sweetheart. In Defence of the Bush by Banjo Patterson So you're back from up the country, Mr Lawson, where you went, and you're cursing all the business in a bitter discontent. Well, we grieve to disappoint you, and it makes us sad to hear that it wasn't cool and shady, and there wasn't plenty beer. And the loony bullock snorted when you first came into view. Well... You know it's not so often that he sees a swell like you. And the roads were hot and dusty, and the plains were burnt and brown. And no doubt you're better suited drinking lemon squash in town. Yet, perchance, if you should journey down the very track you went, in a month or two at furthest, you would wonder what it meant. Where the sun-baked earth was gasping, like a creature in its pain, you would find the grasses waving like a field of summer grain, and the miles of thirsty gutters blocked with sand and choked with mud, you would find the mighty rivers with a turbid sweeping flood. For the rain and drought and sunshine make no changes in the street, in the sullen line of buildings and the ceaseless tramp of feet. But the bush has moods and changes as the seasons rise and fall. And the men who know the bushland, they are loyal through it all. But you found the bush was dismal and a land of no delight. Did you chance to hear a chorus in the shearer's huts at night? Did they rise up William Riley by the campfire's cheery blaze? Did they rise him as we rose him in the good old droving days, and the women of the homesteads and the men you chanced to meet, were their faces sour and saddened like the faces in the street, and the shy selected children, were they better now or worse than the little city urchins who would greet you with a curse? Is not such a life much better than the squalid street and square? Where the fallen women flaunt it in the fierce electric glare. Where the seamstress plies her sewing till her eyes are sore and red. In a filthy, dirty attic, toiling on for daily bread. Did you hear no sweeter voices in the music of the bush? Than the roar of trams and buses and the war whoop of the push? Did the magpies rouse your slumbers? with their carols sweet and strange. Did you hear the silver chiming of the bellbirds on the range? But perchance the wild bird's music by your senses was despised. For you say you'll stay in townships till the bush is civilised. Would you make it a tea garden and on Sundays have a band where the blokes might take their donners with a public close at hand? You had better stick to Sydney and make merry with the push, for the bush will never suit you 
and you'll never suit the bush.